So what we've done so far is uh, set up a grid, right? A 10 by 10 grid. And we use sort of Pythagorean triplets, simple trigonometry uh, to set up a square grid, right? Where we had a oh, horizontal baseline and we set up a 90 degree angle going vertically and we were able to connect everything up and do vertical and horizontal and have a nice little 10 by 10 grid, right? And what we did with this grid is we learned our multiplication table, the 10 by 10 multiplication table, where we laid down the numbers one to 10 down here and one to 10 up there. And, you know, we filled in the, the squares here, right? And we fi figured out what our 10 by 10 multiplication table is. And uh, that's something really important that um, you have to learn, right? You have to know your multiplication table before you progress anywhere in mathematics, right? It's basically the first step you need to do uh, to be able to learn math, even before you learn the concept of real numbers and uh, all the subcategories, right? You have to learn multiplication, okay? Now, since we have the grid up, um, I figured what I was going to do, I was going to show you a, sort of a math puzzle game that I learned a few years ago from, uh, uh, from a student that I had, right? And it's a nice little game and um, uh, I, you know, after my student showed it to me, I ended up playing it for a few months and it was really uh, fun to do on pen and paper and uh, it was really meditative, uh, right? It was, uh, it, it was very chill. I would just sit there sometimes when I just wanted to relax and uh, do this little puzzle game and see how far I could get. And um, just to give you the details of it, my student, uh, he, was, he was originally from Turkey and he said that as far as he knew, the game came from Turkey because a lot of his friends played it. And I've never found out the name for this game, so I just keep on calling it a 10 by 10 uh, math puzzle game. Um, and just so you know, it's, it's not, there isn't too much mathematics in it, but one part of math is, the huge part of mathematics is pattern recognition. And I sort of refer to this as a pattern recognition game, because what it is, it's uh, just using numbers sequentially from one, you know, consecutively from one to a hundred to fill in every one of these squares, right? To populate every one of these squares. And the purpose of the game is you start out with the number one and consecutively you move up, right? So you start out with one and then the next number is two and the next number is three. And you start putting the numbers in these squares based on two movement types, okay? And we'll go over that. And just to let you know, it's, um, for me, I played it for a few months after my student showed it to me and uh, the best I ever got to was to the number 99. That means I was able to fill in every square except for one. And my student told me that he, would, he was playing this game for about three years or so, right? And he was only able to complete it once, get to the number 100 once. And it was recently that he did it. That's why it was really exciting, he was trying it again. And I saw him doing it and he showed me how he did it. And he showed me, he actually gave me his solution. And um, I did do a little write up on the instructions for this game a few years ago. And I provided that solution uh, in that write up. And I also provided the solution that I had that I got to the, my best, uh, my best um, uh, outcome, I guess, which was to the number 99. And uh, just, uh, just for those of you who are into programming or, or you know, want to pursue this game a little bit further, uh, a few years ago when I, when I did write that article, uh, you know, explaining what this game was like and all the rules and whatnot, or the two rules, very simple rules that we will we'll go over, um, I got a couple of messages, a couple of comments were posted on that write-up mentioning that um, people have, you know, they wrote programs to be able to get solutions. So one person, they wrote a program to generate solutions for this. And another person pro pro uh, wrote a quick program that you can run on your computer where you don't have to do it on uh, with pencil and paper. What you can do it is, run this program and as far as i know the program works fine because i tried it when he first uh, uh when he first wrote it and sent me the link to the code and the program itself right uh, and the link is provided in that write-up but i did try it and it worked fine and what it does is you run it and it pops up 
uh, 10 by 10 grid and what you can do is just click on the different squares and the, the numbers pop up what you're putting in there the consecutive numbers pop up and it only allows you to put numbers where the rules specify right uh, so if you feel like playing it on the computer you can do that as well okay so that's the little background history on this game as for the rules of this game the rules are really simple the name of the game is you're going to start with number one okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put number one somewhere right somewhere in one of these squares and then we consecutively move up right so the next number we have to put down is the number two but there's restrictions on where you can put down number two there's movement types right so let's put down number one right now so let's say we're going to put number one towards the center okay now the movement types there's basically two different movement types you have if you're going vertical or horizontal the next number you put down has to be three squares away from this okay that means there has to be a two square gap between whatever number you're on and the next number that you're going to be putting down right which has to be consecutive in order right so after number one is the number two right so we can put number two either one two three here one two three here one two three here or one two three here right that's the vertical and horizontal movements and they have the same rule associated with them right same movement type right so we can go one two three here one two three here all right so the next number is two i should put that down two two i can go one two three here okay. and i can go one two three here okay that's your vertical and horizontal movement types the next movement type we have is diagonal and you have to be at 45 degrees so you have to go perfectly diagonal right the next movement type if you're going diagonal is you can go two units away so there's only one square gap between your number and the next number right so the number two i could place here i could place here i could place here or i could place here right so the next number i can go one two one two right one two or one two okay and those are the movement types that we have and you know obviously we're not going to put all of these as two populate all these fields all these squares as two right we have to decide on one now what we're going to do let's pick let's go diagonal let's go straight down to this one okay so i'm going to keep this one i'm going to get rid of the rest all right i'm going to consider that to be my movement okay now the next number we have to put down is a number three right and the same rules apply now we can't go up right because once a field once a square is occupied it can't be reoccupied right so this one is taken we can't go there we can go one two we can put a three there we can go one two three right we can put a three there we can't go down here because we go off grid we can't go off grid we have to be on the grid right we can't go down because that takes us off grid we can't go that way because that's off grid we can go this way so we have oh and we can go this way so we have four choices for our next position right we can go one two three we can go here we can go here we can go here or we can go here what i'm going to do i'm going to go diagonally here okay so my number three is going to go here okay so i went here here right 
Now the next number up is the number four, right? This is simple as this, right? You just consecutively move up. So the number four, I can go here, I can go here, I can go here, I can go here. I can't go there, right? Because it's already occupied. I can go here or I can go here. So there's only two spots which I can't go to, right? I can't go to this one and I can't go to this one because that's going to be off grid, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go right onto the edge, right? Uh, because when I was, when I was playing this game, what I used to do is try to get the outside filled up first and spiral in. Now, I'm not sure if that's the best strategy to use or not, right? Maybe the best strategy is to work from the inside out. And I believe I tried that as well a lot, uh, but, uh, I started sticking with starting on the outside and spiraling in and, uh, that got me to, to the number 99 right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go down here so this is going to be my next position number four okay now number five i can go here i can't go there that's taken i can go here or i can go here right now what i'm going to do i'm going to go here go diagonally across to this guy so this is going to be my number five. Okay. Now, uh, just for fun, uh, since we haven't, I haven't done this for a while, let's continue this to see how far we're going to get. But that's basically the movement types that we have, right? So on the write-up that I did, I provided 10 by 10, you know, grid paper that you can print off, or you can just grab, you know, graph paper if you want to do it, or run the module. Uh, run the program that um, a user, someone had commented and provided, and the link is still up, right? Now keep in mind, um, with the solution, uh, the one solution that I got from my student, right? If you get one solution, it also means, because there's symmetry within this, you also have, I believe, seven other solutions, because there's mirror symmetry and there's rotational symmetry, okay? So keep that in mind. As soon as you have one, that means you have seven more because you can rotate them or do mirrors of, you know, do symmetry. There's axis of symmetry in these things, right? But all we're concerned about right now is to get one solution, right? I've never done it. I doubt it if we're going to, you know, I'm going to be able to do it right now, but who knows? Maybe uh, it's the luck of the draw, right? So what we're going to do is from here, I'm going to go all the way around. So three squares up, two unit gap. So this is the number six. Okay. I'm going to go one, two, three. This is the number seven. Oops. Now I can't go here on the top row, right? I have to go here. Okay. So I'm going to go, you know what? The other choice is I can go down this way oops I can go to this one and then come back and then go back up again and then do rotation and keep on filling this guys up right so I would fill all this up but then I couldn't do all the way around again okay I hope you see that there's a lot of different strategies you can use for this and I can't remember um, if my student had told me to use a specific type of strategy or not uh, he played it for three years and he was only able to get one solution and he mentioned that a lot of his friends uh, in Turkey were playing this game and very few of them were able to get a solution okay so this was number seven so I'm gonna go to number eight and I'm gonna keep on going across one two three this is number nine one two three this is going to be number 10 right now i have my choices i could come here or i could go there there's only two choices left for this one right oh uh, that side is gone that side is gone i can't go diagonal here here or here right and that one i can't go anymore because i already populated that one so i'm going to go down to here okay this is going to be 11 one, two, three, this is going to be 12. 
I'm going to come diagonally. This is going to be 13. I'm going to come across 14. One, two, three. I'm going to come here. 15. Now keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to use numbers, right? You could just use spots. You could use X's, right? Or colors, right? Different, you know, pick a color and just start filling in the squares. The problem with that though is if you take your eyes off the grid, you won't know where you are, right? With this, with the numbering system, we know exactly where our last movement was, right? We won't accidentally start from this one and start going off, right? If we lose our location, right? So that's the bonus of using numbers, right? So we're at number 15. Now I can go up or I can go diagonal this way, right? I'm gonna keep on going up. I'm gonna use horizontal and vertical movements for now. 16, one, two, three, 17, one, two, three, 18, right? One, two, three, 19. One, two, three, 20. Now, what I'm gonna do, instead of coming down, I'm gonna go diagonal because I wanna work on the outside first, right? So I'm gonna go diagonal, this is gonna be 21. And I'm gonna come down, one, two, three, 22. One, two, three, 23. Now I can't come down here, but I can go across, right? So 24. One, two, three, 25. One, two, three, 26, all right? One, two, three, 27. One, two, three, twenty-eight. All right. One, two. All right. I'm gonna go diagonal. Hit this one up. Okay. So that's gonna be twenty-nine. And one, two, three. Thirty. One, two, three, 31, right? Now, you should have noticed something. Now, when I get up to here, if you notice this guy, the next movement would be here, the next movement would be here, right? So, and the next movement would be here. So as soon as I start doing this, one thing I've noticed is the pattern is obviously, I think it's sort of a given that once you have get close to the end the only movements left will just fill up everything that's left right you can jump from one to the other so it gets it done really quickly okay so where are we we were at 31 okay now i'm going to come down 32 finish one uh, one stack let's go 32 one two three 33 one two three 34 one two three 35. One, two, three, can't do, that's taken, right? So what I could do is come here, 
but I can't get back to that one. If I come here, I can go diagonal again. So what I'm trying to do is get to this outside surround, right? Because if I get there, all the sides are done, right? So we're here right now. I could go here and come down and I'll, I'll get to the square and that way I can move my way around, right? So let's do that one, right? So I'm 35, I can go 36 here, right? Now I can go diagonally 37 down here. So 37. And now I should be able to do all these jumps, right? So let's do it. 37, 38. Now one strategy could be to keep all these jumps for the end, right? That way if you can take care of all the middle guys, all you have to do is get to one of these squares and you're done, right? But let's do it this way for now. That's something you can try yourself if you like. This might get me addicted to start doing it again. I played it for a few months uh, fairly regularly. Cause it was a lot of fun. 43, 44, 1, 2, 3, 45, 46, 47, 48, All right. so we got 48 done, we're almost done almost half the squares, right, because 50 is half the squares, but it seems like there's a lot of squares left, that's because on the outside, it takes more numbers to cover them, right? So this thing, what happens is initially it's a lot of choices and slowly your choices decrease, decrease, decrease. And towards the end, you really have to think about, you know, where are you going to go? So 48, I want to go to 49. fifty. Now I'm going to keep the same strategy, doing the outside first or trying to do as much of the outside as possible because that's where most of my squares are, right? 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, I can't go diagonal, I'm going to come down, 54, One, two, three, down here, 55. Let's go across. One, two, three, 56. And uh, let's see, what can we do? Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come across here that way I can get to here and then zap these guys. Okay, so 56, 57. And then I'm gonna come down 58. This might not be the best strategy. You might, it might be smart to leave some space on the outside so you can go in and out, right? But we're gonna try this for now. 59, 60, 61, 62. I 
can't go sideways. So 63. What I could do is come here. Yeah, let's go straight down here for now. 63. So my choice here is gone. I could go diagonal here. I could go diagonal here. I could come straight here. Which way to go? If I go diagonal here, I'll go here, here, here. I can zap those guys inside. So let's do that on the outside, right? So 63, I'm gonna go 64. I'm gonna go 1, 2, 3, 65. I'm gonna go 1, 2, 3, 66. One, two, three, sixty seven. Sixty eight. Right. I can hit that one, that one, and that one as well. Right. Sixty eight, sixty nine. Seventy, seventy-one. Okay. Now seventy-two. I can't put there. I only have one choice for seventy-two right there, right? If I go seventy-two, seventy-three, seventy-four, seventy-five, seventy-six, and then I can come out of that, right? Okay. Let's do that. So seventy-one. 72 I can go diagonally 73 I can come back here 74 I can come down 75 76 Right. I only have one choice left for 77 now. I have to go here, right? 1, 2, 77. Now, this is where your choices are totally they're <laughs> becoming less and less, right? So 77, two, I can go here, 78. I can go here, 78. Or I can go here, 78. Now, here I can go 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, and then I'll be stuck. So that's not good. Let's see, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, I think so. So let's do that one. 78, 79, 80, And go down to eighty three. Right. I think I'm putting myself into a corner. I think I'm going to be stuck on the next move. Now, the best I've ever done is ninety nine, and this isn't even close. Um, towards the end, once I got the hang of this, I was going into the mid 1990s or mid 90s, right? So, what do we have? We had 83, 84, 84, and then I would be stuck if I do 84, 84, that works, and then 85, 
that works. So let's do that. So 84. And then we have 85. Or I could do 85 over here. 86. Same deal. 87, 88. Okay, let's see, 84, 85, actually, let's do this, 84, I could come here, 85, 86, 87, 88, we could do that too, let's do this one, 85, 86, all right? Eighty six. I can go up eighty seven. I can go sideways eighty eight. Right, eighty five, eighty six, eighty seven, eighty eight. I can go 89. That's my only choice from here, right? I got no, nothing else. 89. I got 90. Is that it? Oh, I can go here. No, oh, I can do this one. So 90. That's better. One, two, three, ninety. I can go ninety-one. That's good. That gets us closer. Ninety-one. Right. I could go ninety-two, ninety-three. I would be stuck. I can go ninety-two, ninety-three, ninety-four. Oh, that's not bad. Ninety-one, ninety-two. Ninety three. Right. Let's do ninety three. Ninety four. I can go up there. Right. Ninety five. That's my only choice for ninety five. And I think I got one more choice left. That's it. A 96. Right. 96. Could we have done something else? I don't think so. 95. If I could get to this one or that one, I could have filled both of those and we could have got 98, but 96, 96 is not bad, right? Um, I haven't tried this for a while. So 96, so four missing, right? Four, we've got four gaps here. One, two, three, four. Four minus 100 is 96. And, um, you know, I guess that's in the range I used to be able to get. And uh, I think if there was a point system associated with this game, um, you would have to say that um, you would sort of have an exponential uh, sort of a point system where the closer you got to 100, the points would be doubled or one and a half times, right? Because 97, if I got to 96, I'll say that was worth 10 points. If you get to 97, that should be worth not just 11 points but a lot more so it should be worth like 15 points or 20 points 98 maybe a lot more than that right i don't know if we want to use logarithmic scale uh, that's a little too high but if you do um, do this with a point system i think there should be some kind of exponential growth associated with this uh, with the points that you do get okay and this is the game this is a 10 by 10 math puzzle game uh, that uh, my students showed me and I call this a pattern recognition game uh, because it is really a pattern recognition game right um, it's fun to do
then it's pretty it's interesting okay and it puts your mind in the neutral and you can enjoy it and uh, and uh, just chill with it for a bit um, it's sort of like that Japanese game I think it's Japanese Sudoku uh, where you you know you know the columns and the rows add up to nine or different variations of that right uh, but this one doesn't require any adding at all uh, it's just sequentially consecutively moving up knowing your position your last position and having two movement types to put the next number down okay i hope you enjoyed um, learn how to set up a grid uh, learn your multiplication table and learn a nice little game on a 10 by 10 grid okay i'll see you guys in the next video bye for now